Hi, welcome. Welcome, if you're new to the channel. I'm Dr. Carla Tadek and I specialise in the removal of cysts and lipomas. And I've dedicated my YouTube channel on the education, medical education in terms of the cyst removals and the lipoma treatment, as well as covering a host of medical topics. The virtual clinic is aimed at taking questions from our global audience regarding any medical condition that they would like an educational piece of information. It's by no means a substitute for your regular physician, but can be used as educational. Over the last couple of weeks, we've covered a host of topics and uh, the viewers have been so kind in sending me many, many, many more suggestions about the various topics we should be covering. And I really appreciate it. So if you've got uh, any topic that you want covered, let me know. In the coming weeks, we will be covering rheumatoid arthritis, lichen uh, plainness, uh, as well as some of the, the gut disorders. So those are in the bank. We're going to be discussing those. We also use this opportunity to discuss the videos that we've released because uh, we're all uh, very much uh, invested in, uh, in cyst and lipoma treatment. Remember, if you see anything in, in my videos and you think you'd like treatment, then of course you can contact me at lipomacyst.com. That's your one-stop shop for lipoma and cyst treatment. We've also got some exciting news. In the coming weeks, we'll be developing an e-commerce store where you can purchase uh, products relating to health and beauty and skin, and that will be at drcarlatadek.com. So in the last video, there was a lot of uproar where we described a pile assist as being female. Now, obviously, we weren't saying that there are male and female pile assists, but the, the cyst was in a lady. So apologies for the confusion, but it's always great to hear some feedback. In the next video, we've got a very, very common location uh, of a cyst right on the bra strap of, um, of this lady. Really, really troublesome, very uncomfortable and prone to getting infected if not treated promptly. And we've done a couple of infected cysts and you can see those on my channel. Much more complicated uh, and much more tricky to treat. We've set a little challenge in the video, so make sure you tune in. And Some gifts from our viewers, uh, I believe in the United States. Thank you very, very much. And we'll be opening that at the end as well as doing our shout out. So I thought we'd kick off today by discussing a topic close to my heart, uh, and that is sleep biology. Now, a lot of you have heard me talk about sleep on a number of different occasions and in different formats, whether it be on radio or um, other YouTube channels or in the papers. So I thought I'd cover it for you guys. I haven't actually done a sleep video for the channel itself. Uh, so we'll do that, and if time permits, we may cover some of the other ones, but if you stay tuned for Friday and Sunday, we'll be covering, like I mentioned, rheumatoid arthritis, lichen sclerosis, and uh, many, many other topics. So to begin with, welcome everyone. I want to welcome everybody. Um, so sleep, as you know, is something that life on Earth has evolved with. You know, life on Earth has revolved around... The, the presence of the sun and how it rotates around uh, a 24-hour cycle. So we get 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night on average. And everything on Earth has lived under that environment for billions and billions of years. So invariably, the biology has adapted to this 12-hour day-light cycle. And we, need, we know this in plants, you know, they open up in the mornings and during the, the midday and then they close up over the evenings. We also know that there are animals that are sort of up and active by day and then go to sleep by night. And also we know animals that are up by night and sleep by day. So already biology around us displays what we would describe as a circadian rhythm. That is to say, it is adapted to, to the way that light and darkness uh, interplay on a 12, 24 hour cycle. So how does this impart on us humans? Well, the answer is very, very big. <laughs> um, we spend a large proportion of our time sleeping on average about eight hours a day. And we do that for a reason. Uh, and for those of you who struggle with sleep or have had disrupted sleep, will know that your function decreases significantly. We also know that sleep plays an important role, not just for us to feel refreshed, in the morning, but it also is one of the, the cardinal features 
but we also know that certain uh, psychiatric and uh, medical conditions are characteristically identified by sleep disturbance patterns. For instance, depression. We have early morning wakenings. Those individuals who wake up at four, five in the morning, a little bit earlier than they would normally, and then they struggle to go back to sleep. We also know that certain conditions fluctuate according to the time of day. For instance, um, there are certain skin conditions like scabies that are particularly more itchy at night. So a lot of itchy type symptoms happen at night. In terms of physiology, our body has adapted to this 24 hour cycle and our blood pressure follows a circadian rhythm so that we know that in the morning your blood pressure is at its lowest. And then as the day progresses, when you need to be up and, and going, your blood pressure goes up. And that's because the hormonal rhythms are also circadian. That means your cortisol levels are going up. More interestingly, and probably less spoken about, is that if you combine lots and lots of 24 hour cycles, you can almost bring them together into a lunar cycle. That is a 28 day cycle. And for women, that's particularly per per pertinent because the menstrual cycle is based on a lunar calendar. So is there a connection between these mini 24 hour cycles and a bigger 28 day cycle? Uh, well, I'll leave that for you to discuss. So a lot of people I see in clinic complain about poor sleep, doc, how do I sleep? I can't sleep, what should I do? And so the first thing I always recommend is sleep hygiene. And what do I mean by that? Well, there are certain things that you should know about sleep and certain elements and stimuli that will affect your sleep. And the most common of those are noise, light, temperature. So it may sound very, very simple, but often we are sleeping in a cosmopolitan world where street light is coming into the bedroom. Uh, we also live in a very modern life where iPads and iPhones are easy at hand, easily at hand, and when we should be fast asleep, we may be uh, you know, doing some uh, something on our phone or watching something on the laptop. So that light at night pollution is disrupting the way your body perceives the cycle because your eyes are, in effect, the uh, the window to your soul. Your eyes detect light; it relays that information to a specific end. Is what we describe as the grandfather clock. So your eyes identify that it's daylight, the grandfather clock in the brain goes, okay, let's synchronize the body according to that time zone. And it sends the message throughout the body so that your blood pressure goes up in time. Uh, if that disruption occurs, then the whole thing falls apart. And we know that if you disrupt sleep, you can have an increased rate of heart attacks, certain types of cancers, infertility, uh, so just, just a, a, a number of, of, of very big uh, conditions that are disrupted by sleep. So when we think about the stimuli, we've got to make sure that we reduce the light at night. So put your iPhones and your iPads away. We also know that if it's too loud, you're not going to sleep. So make sure that your sleep is not disturbed by sound. So that could be a television that you might be having playing in the background. So make sure that you are asleep because you don't want your brain to be picking up these audible signals and think, you know, maybe you should be awake. We also know that temperature plays a big role in sleep. A lot of you will struggle to go to sleep in hot, hot weathers, but more than happy to tuck into the duvets and snuggle away and fall asleep when it's icy cold. That's because when your core body temperature drops, you in effect push yourself into a human form of hibernation. You initiate sleep. And one way to manipulate that is to have a hot shower. So if you have a warm shower before you go to bed, you become flushed, your blood vessels come up to the surface and they start to radiate heat. That heat radiation reduces your core temperature and helps to initiate sleep. So there we go. There are also many, many things we consume that will disrupt our sleep. And the most common culprits are caffeine. Now, a lot of us like a, a little bit of a coffee but do you know that caffeine has a half-life of about six hours? What that means is that every six hours that passes from when you've consumed your coffee, there will be 50% of that coffee still in your bloodstream. So an example would be if you were to have a uh, coffee at three o'clock in the afternoon, six hours later, that's nine o'clock, there'll be 50% of that caffeine still in your blood. 
which you might think, well, you know, it's nine o'clock, I still want to feel a little bit awake. However, by three o'clock, what does that mean, that 25%? That's like waking up at three o'clock in the morning and having a couple of, a quarter of your Starbucks cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty mind blowing. So think about the time of day when you consume your caffeine. I always tell my patients not to consume caffeine after 12 or one o'clock in the afternoon. You wanna make sure that that half-life, that, that, that concentration of caffeine is nice and low when you need it most. Now, we spoke a little bit about initiating sleep. Now, something that we may sometimes be guilty of is having sort of siestas. You come back from work, you slouch on the couch, and you fall asleep, and then you wake up, you have your dinner, you watch a bit of television, and then you try and go back to sleep again. Now, the way that we initiate sleep is we build up what is described as sleep pressure. You can imagine sleep pressure as being a pressure cooker. Now you've got your, your piece of meat in the pressure cooker, you're trying to cook it, but then someone comes along and opens the lid and all the pressure dissipates, all disappears. And then you wonder why your food isn't being cooked. Well, if you do take that midday nap, you're consuming some of that pressure, some of that force that was gonna push you to sleep at 10 o'clock in the evening all the way through to the morning. So you don't want to expend your sleep pressure too early on, okay? More products that you might be consuming, alcohol. Alcohol late at night will also cause you to have sleep disturbance. So bear that in mind. So I thought that would be a quick discussion. A lot of people ask me about sleep, sleep disturbance in particular. So I thought we'd just cover it on my channel uh, and let you have that uh, here to watch. Remember in the next clips, we'll be covering uh, rheumatoid arthritis, light and plainness, and some diet issues as well. If you've got questions about which topics you'd like, then please let me know. Put it in the comment section, then message me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, and I'll be able to answer those in the forthcoming um, editions. Uh, we'll do a quick shout out and then we'll open, actually, should we open the box? Should we open the box? Let's open the box first. So we've got a, a wonderful gift. It came today to my offices in, uh, in South Kensington. And uh, it's from Mrs. Steed from Arizona. So it arrived safely. So let's have a look. It's a big box. Uh, open the box to make sure that it's all legit. So uh, that's, that's interesting. So let's open it up. Uh, let's see what we've got. Let me see if I can tilt the camera down a little bit uh, and show you what we've got here. Uh, let me see, is that, there we go. Okay, so, um, okay, so opening this box up. Um, opening up a bit like a cyst. We've got to separate the skin off the surface. Um, it's gonna be a bit tricky, this. here we go. Let's go straight down the box. Uh, let's have a look. Ugh. It's kind of, <laughs> of, of people to send me stuff that you really shouldn't do. Okay, so we're opening it up. Wow, it's a big box. Okay, so we've got some padding. So let's take a look. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So we've got a card. We've got a card at the bottom. Let's have a look. That's a beautiful card. It's addressed to myself, Dr. Sadek. Um, lovely, hope you're enjoying it. So here we go, balance that box. That's the card. Oh, wow, beautiful. Uh, you have a wonderful talent for being kind. That's, that's what I don't know if you can see, is it too bright? That's wonderful. For this, Dr. Zek, do you like sweets? Here is a taste from New Orleans. Oh, wow, Cajun style. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ah, sweet tooth. Uh, here I am talking about getting yourselves to sleep. I might be tucking in some extra sugary sweeties before bed, I've already brushed my teeth. Uh, just a special thank you for all we do, your dedicated fans across the pond. That's Carolyn and Bridget. Carolyn and Bridget, thank you so much. Uh, wonderful. We'll, we'll have a look at these Cajun sweets. I'm not sure what we're going to find. Let's have a look. Let's open up and see. Oh, well, there's a big box here. Let's turn it the right way around. Let's, oh. Okay, let's have a look. look. There's another card in here. So New Orleans Pralines. <laughs> wow. Okay. Down in Louisiana, as the legend goes, uh, there's an old secret recipe that nobody knows. <laughs> I'm liking this already. Our pralines are made from that recipe that's been handed down through our families for over 150 years. They've got some good things going on in New Orleans. One bite of our New Orleans pralines 
captivates the essence of New Orleans. Rich in culture, law, and flavor, bring the taste of Louisiana and the old New Orleans home with you. It says it here in black and white that I've got to consume it immediately. Immediately. So let's, there's two kind, Bridget and Carolyn, that's too kind. You really shouldn't have. No wonder they, they, I wonder if uh, the Border Force had a little praline, you know, just to make sure it was all good. Let's have a look. Okay. So these are New Orleans pralines. Amazing. And it's fresh. Fresh from the United States. This is really, really kind. You really shouldn't have. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at these. New Orleans pralines. Original creamy pecan twists. Okay. Here we are. Shall we? Yes, I think we will. Okay, let's, um, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. One must taste these legendary pralines from New Orleans. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, they are. Oh, wow, they smell so buttery and nice. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, ladies, thank you so much. Oh. Mmm, there goes my weight loss plan. Those are unbelievable. It's like, mmm, it's like toffee. But, well, excuse me while I... <laughs> probably not the wisest thing to eat on live camera, but... Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Amazing. Okay. So... I'm gonna scroll to the top. Oh, those are so good. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, if you guys want the, the best pralines, fudge cake, that I would recommend the um, the creamy pecans from New Orleans. Thank you so much, Carolyn and Bridget for that. That's a very generous gift. You really, really shouldn't have. So let's do a shout out. We've got the, uh, the top, we've got to go through the list. We've got a few more minutes and then we're gonna cut to this juicy cyst, it's a bra strap cyst. There's a question at the very end, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, so, Kerry Shorthouse, she is at number one, number one on the podium position. Donna Adams, number two from Oklahoma City, Colorado, is doing well. Gail Sharp, hi, how are you doing? Every one way ticket for Oklahoma would be my dream. Looks beautiful, awesome. Uh, Brazil, awesome. Uh, let's have a question for Dr. K. At approximately what age will a woman's skin start to get thinner? I'm a little over 65 uh, and I've been off hormones for about five years now. Is that a factor? Certainly hormones will, will cause, well, let's go, we'll go into a little bit. Of this. So, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are going to be so many questions. Uh, yeah, dropping in estrogen levels will reduce uh, maybe a little bit of thinning, maybe a bit of subtlety. It'll make the skin friable, delicate. It can break. Um, obviously, uh, HRT or estrogen supplements can boost uh, boost that a little bit. Uh, Louise Cook, hi ladies, welcome from Atlanta. Awesome. Uh, Donna Adams, Oklahoma. Louise Cook, I've been inspired to be extremely proactive with my doctor this morning about thyroid disease as a result of participation here. Awesome, Louise Cook. Caroline Tomton from Wales, welcome. Sherry S, welcome. Uh, let's have a look. Who else we got in the house here? Uh, Anne Brooks, welcome. Uh, let's quickly, quickly scroll through. Suffering from heat exhaustion after chatting on Sunday, AC failed. My son took me back to my daughter's. AC fixed. I'm doing well. That's Anne Brooks. AC went down. Let me put this camera up a bit, I think. Otherwise, you're not going to see me in the entirety. Sid G, welcome. Hello, everyone. Just walked in, walked the dog. But it's sec Oops. Sorry, second time today. Uh, nearly ready for Dr. S's VC. Loving it. Bridget Schumacher is saying, hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for lunch. Awesome. Kerry Shorthouse, not chatting before you can ask Dr. Salek any medical questions. Uh, let's have a look. Scrolling through, let's do some shout outs. Can I have diabetes and understand a tiny bit of what you're going through? I think there's an indiscussion there. Let's have a look. Who else? Right, Rhonda Burke, I've been missing the chat, getting ready for our new grandson's birth schedule for this Friday. Brilliant. Beyond exciting. Deborah Wonka, Dr. Sadek from Northern Carol. Line, North, uh, North California, the High Sierra Mountains, we're definitely having evacuations. The fire is now 13 miles away. Oh, God bless you, Deborah. Look, stay safe. Um, you know, take what you can and, and hopefully the fires will, will stop. Uh, 
Elsa Vieira is saying, hi, Sandra Flynn. Uh, I'm going to miss another live chat. I'm so early. Well, awesome. Let's, have, let's scroll through. Let's have a look. Um, well, doctor, I'm suffering from a lot of issues, swollen fingers in the morning, along with very painful stiffness. Okay, so look, Kerry, we're going to be covering rheumatoid arthritis. Stay tuned, either Friday or Sunday. You're going to have to watch both of them. Uh, let's see who else is in this town. Sandra Flynn. Uh, Maria Gidley from Minnesota, Jasmine Martinez from Harlem in New York City, Joyce Suggs from Birmingham, Alabama, Sherry S, Mary Wolfs from Romond, welcome, uh, Alessandra from Brazil, welcome, Jay Corwin, how are you doing, Susanna Burt from Lake California, it's 85 degrees, a bit windy, Kerry Shorthouse is loving it, she wants a bit more information on rheumatoid arthritis and nuclear medicine scans, Dr. Sarah is in the house, our resident orthodontist, welcome. Uh, Louise Cook, can I suggest mental and physical health during a pandemic? That's a good, that's a good one, Louise Cook. I like that. I like that. Can I suggest mental and physical health? Okay, that's interesting. I think because we might be going through a second lockdown, I think the numbers are kind of creeping up. That'd be a good one. Let's do that. Absolutely. Uh, Sula Lally from London. Welcome, Gibby's wife. How are you doing? Cara Hoyt, welcome. John Aristotle, welcome. Uh, where can I get my flu shot? Uh, the flu shots in the United Kingdom are being released uh, end of September, early October, depending on age. Speak to your GP. PJ Shores, Stonehouse Mountain from Atlanta. Welcome. Jennifer Chapman, what creams do you prefer? Uh, just about as good as Botox itself. Ooh, I get this a lot. I, a lot of people say to me, you know, you, you spend like 300 bucks on Botox, but it does it. It just works. And you can spend you know, tons on creams and just keep massaging it through and it just doesn't work. So there's two two schools of thoughts. One that go, want to go just au natural and just go for the, uh, the creams and some we just want, let's just blitz it. Let's get the Botox done and save save the energy on the creams. It's, it's like whatever you do is going to cost. Uh, Margarida from Portugal, welcome. Uh, Kim Colors, welcome. Let's have a look. Sula Lali, for viewers from the United Kingdom, please stay safe as a second wave may be coming. Wear your masks. I've got my mask here. My frivolous Dr. Carlin mask. I should wear this whenever I'm around those pralines because those pralines are very, very irresistible. Uh, Jennifer Chapman, is this the answers and questions clinic? Awesome. Andrea, how are you doing from Hungary? Awesome. Uh, separate keratosis, Helen Gregory, we might add that in. Kelly Storm, uh, I must be a night blooming flower because I sleep during the day and awake in the evening. Well, uh, when I'm not either insomniac or sleeping 24-7. Well, Kelly, get your cycle in order. You don't want to be out of sync. Chronic uh, desynchronization of sleep will lead to disease. I have sleep apnea. Just got a pap machine. See pap machine. Okay, and look, stay safe with that machine, okay? Sid G, does taking blood pressure medication affect your sleep? Yes, it can if you take it at, you know, the wrong times. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about what time to start taking medication. You know, traditionally we just take it in the morning, we take it all your medication in the morning. But actually, as we get to understand a bit more about physiology and sleep biology, the timing in which you take your medication is critical. And, and there's some advice, speak to your local physicians, but there's some advice about the times they should take your blood pressure tablets. So just check with them for further updates. Uh, Alessandro, is this the explanation? Is amazing. Thanks for talking about sleep. Well, I hope everybody gets a good night's sleep today. M Pheasant 2000 flu shots available from the pharmacy in the United States. Insurance won't pay. Uh, the doctor. Karen Gailey, incline your beds, she says. Lauren Barr says, Dr. Sedek, she's from Illinois, United States, has horrible insomnia. And she takes 20 milligrams of Ambient, that's melatonin for those over in the United Kingdom. She has depression, generalized anxiety and PTSD, and it's all compounding the problem. Well, look, that's the thing. If you don't sleep, invariably it affects your mental health. And if it affects your mental health, you don't sleep. And you've got this continuous cycle, this feedback loop where you just need to break it. I think Ambient may be a way to do that. Exercising before you go to bed, thinking about the sleep hygiene. Um, and, and maybe even like twi twi you know, twiddling around with the medication. So just speak to your local physician about that as well. Irani from Brazil, welcome. Kelly Storms, I can't use my CPAP, just can't sleep with it on. It's, it is difficult, it's really kind of cumbersome and continue. For those who don't know, CPAP stands for um, Continuous Airway Pressure. 
Uh, Alessandro Testa, you should see his interview on new channel called Dream Sleep Series, episode 13. Yeah, I did that with um, Dr. Um, oh, her name escapes me now. Um, let's have a look. Who else we got? Mary Wolf, loving the show. Uh, Linda Gaskill, valuable info doc. Thank you. Awesome. Susan Burton, my sleep is suffering. I may get four to five hours straight hours at night. Uh, up in the early mornings, I take care of elderly aunts for years. How do you reset the clock? <clears throat> That's a really good question. How do you reset your clock? Well, if you take on board what we've said about your diet and the stimuli that can affect um, sleep patterns, think about exercising more, think about what you eat, think about staying healthy. It's kind of a full package. At the moment, the pharmacological industry hasn't got a little tablet that you can kind of pong, uh, pop inside and it will resynchronize your, your body clocks. It's probably in the making, but it's not available yet. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, this is great information. People are loving it. Brandy Parton, I only sleep no longer than 45 minutes at a time. Don't drink caffeine. I'm suffering. Brandy, get your physician to take a look at that. Maybe we need to do some sleep studies. Look at the REM. Look at the deep sleep. Find out why that is. Rear C. I have some folks that, caf that, that, that are calm on coffee and lets them sleep. Rare, I'm sure. Any ideas what's going on with this response? I'm not sure. Sounds very odd. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Marcy from the Morona Valley in California been having Wi-Fi problems. <laughs> Maybe it's my phone. Awesome. Uh, Ruham, hi, Doc. Uh, Brandy, I have, I have, uh, let's have a look. Scroll right down, let's see. Uh, D Calloway, how are you doing? Rhea C, let's have a look. Any more questions? Um, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many questions. I'm not going to be able to cover all of them, but I will try and look through them um, after what we're going to show next, a rather juicy brassist. Stay tuned. We're going to go straight into the premiere until next time, which is going to be Friday, same time, and Sunday. And don't forget to press the like button. If we don't hit 50 likes, we're not going to see the video. So I'm going to sit here until you all press 50 likes. And I'm going to have a little more bite of this wonderful praline from New Orleans. And it's absolutely stunning. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. Well, I have one more bite. Wow. Okay. I will see everybody in the virtual clinic on Friday at 9.30 Greenwich Mean Time, 1.30 Pacific Time. 4